What's the word, y'all? I think everybody in the world can admit that Reddit is a, a very interesting place, a, a love and hated place for sure. I'll be browsing through r slash KLT for Q, getting video ideas for the main channel, and it's very rare that you get one for this channel, and I did. Um, R1 said, Kenny, you gotta react to this Reddit post. So I click on it, and it says, what is your confession as an NBA fan? Something you're ashamed to admit to your fellow NBA fans. I'm talking real, true, get off my chest stuff. And then he gave some of his confessions, and I read through his confessions. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing too crazy, but I'm curious uh, how crazy this this uh, trend can be or this post can be. And, and R1 was like, Kenny, you got to give us your NBA confessions. And I saw this post a few hours ago, and I've been just thinking and thinking and thinking. And, and I can't think of a super crazy confession that I have revolving around the NBA, y'all. I, I, I don't think I have one. Um, at least off rip, maybe after I react to some other people's stuff in my jog my memory, the only thing I could think about is that like a lot of people see me as like the biggest Bulls fan, which in reality I'm I'm objectively not. I might be one of the more commonly known Bulls fans because of the channels and stuff. But like I be going to Bulls games and talking to people and meeting the people, they be like, Hey bro, do you remember uh uh two years ago when Derrick Rose scored three straight three pointers? I'd be like, Nah, bro, I don't your memory's kind of wild. You remember that random moment in it? So like I am a huge Bulls fan, but I'm not the biggest Bulls fan. You feel me? And and y'all be thinking that I'm like the captain of Bulls fandom, which is again objectively not true. There's fandoms don't have lieutenants. I'm just I'm just a dude. So when the Heat bust my Bulls ass the other day, the mentors was like, ha ha, Kenny, ha ha. And good trash talk is okay, but y'all think I'll, I'll be losing sleep over the Bulls? I'm 25 now. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, when y'all saw me in the apartment. Maybe, maybe not lose sleep, but I might have been a little bit unhinged. Now I just be chilling, bro. I'm enjoying my time. You know what I'm saying? I'm enjoying my time. I'm afraid for the Bulls once playoff time come around a little bit, but it is what it is. So yeah, let me read some of these posts and maybe it'll it'll jog my memory. So this is this, this guy's top three confessions. And two of these are like, oh, I guess four here. Um, and two of these are like, eh. He said that the Dino jerseys from the Raptors are overrated. Sure, that's all right. It's all about style at the end of the day. Everybody has different styles of jerseys and clothes and stuff. So you saying that you don't like it, that's cool. Nobody's going to be mad at you for that. Space Jam 2 was an insulting, patronized a piece of crap, potentially the worst film I've ever seen. But I still find it oddly nostalgic since it, was, since it was the first movie I saw after lockdown was lifted last summer. I mean, I guess that's interesting. Uh, Space Jam 2 wasn't a good movie, but me and my homies got this thing. Where I think a lot of people agree that sometimes movies are so bad that they're good. I think Space Jam 2 falls to that. Just not great acting, not great storytelling. But I watched the whole thing, and I'm definitely a dude that would get 20 minutes into a TV show or 20 minutes into an anime or 20 minutes into a movie and turn it off. But Space Jam 2, I watched the whole thing. Number three is the interesting one. I was excited when KD signed with the Warriors simply because it was unprecedented for such an elite player to join an all-time team, fresh off the greatest regular season in history. It was something your little brother would try to pull off at 2K My GMO. First of all, believe it or not, uh, more than little brothers play 2K My GMO, and I'm going to say that. Uh, but yeah, you're definitely in the minority right here because I think majority of people, me included, were very upset with this thing. Not necessarily, well, I wasn't necessarily up, upset with Kevin Durant, but just upset with the situation. Like individually, KD, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Jerry Mike Green, I love all of those people. But when you put them together, I absolutely despise them. But then, you know, a couple years going to it and a couple years have, have been since that happened. And I enjoyed those years of being an NBA fan. And it's unfortunate that the way they went down was the way they went down. Like nobody wants to see a team lose because of injury. At least I don't. I know there are some weirdos out there that was happy to see players go down. But I wasn't happy that they went down. But it was similar to like when the Heatles joined together. When they lost those championships, I was excited. You know what I'm saying? It gave us a common ground to root against. All NBA fans were united. It was Dub Nation versus 29 other organizations. Or, or South Beach versus 29 other organizations. And I kind of like that. But I will say I enjoy what we're going through now as NBA fans more. Where it's not necessarily a super team where like there's it's an open season. It could be seven different teams that are real contenders. I like that a little bit more. Okay, these first two are both Kings fans getting stuff off the chest. You know what, Kings fans, let it out. You deserve it. I'm a Kings fan and find myself cheering for the Suns and Mavs more than the Kings. And then this one said, I'm a Kings fan who doesn't enjoy watching Fox anymore. Well, your team, um, um, the second one, Larry Jalapeno, your team made that decision to keep Fox around. So you're, you're going to have to get used to it, my boy. <laughs> but the first one, I don't think that's anything crazy, right? Rebuilding teams are hard to watch. Of course, you try to take the silver lining, all the great things out of it. Like when the Bulls are rebuilding, and Larry Marketer had some time, a month where he was averaging like 25 beautiful but i can agree that during the bulls rebuild there were other teams around the league that i rooted for also 
I think it's just it's the way for you to stay engaged with the game because your team is so bad. I would still watch every second of Bulls games, but I would also watch every second of the Houston Rockets when Chris Paul was on there or like. I don't know. Just I just find little things within other organizations to keep me invested when my team is rebuilding. Wow. Okay, okay. I watch quite a bit, but I feel like I don't actually understand the tactics and strategy part of the game or even plays. Never uh, played or watched in high school and only started watching college basketball because it was huge in my university. Like, I just follow the ball, but I, <laughs> but I have almost no idea what off-ball players are doing and why. Frowny face. Sometimes I watch videos explaining certain plays or why something was good defense versus bad defense and players signaling to each other or whatever is like 80 percent of the game i just don't get still enjoy it though this has actually got me thinking about what percentage of basketball is learned from playing the game and what percentage is learned from watching the game because some of the stuff he says like off ball screens or good defense versus bad defense i feel like i learned that from just growing up playing the game and a couple years of high school ball, B team, but you know what I'm saying? I, play, I played, I had a, I had a, a jersey, you know what I'm saying? I put up some points, especially fr freshman year. For a freshman B team, we was out there hooping. Um, but some of that stuff you just learn from playing the game and other parts you learn from watching. I won't come in here and say I'm a basketball savant because I'm very, very far from that. Um, and I, I won't tell you that I know everything about the game of basketball. But if you actively try to find out or learn a game of ball, it's not that hard, bro. It's really not that hard. Like he said, he's trying to watch other videos. There are a lot of high-level content creation creators on YouTube that can break down X's and O's and why teams do this and why other teams don't do this. Um, but it's very interesting to see somebody that enjoys the game but doesn't necessarily understand it. And this is about to be a weird comparison. It's about to be a very weird comparison. I can watch someone do makeup because I, it's like art to me. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know anything about makeup. You know what I'm saying? I consume way more NBA drama than actual NBA games. Hey, I legit think you're in the majority here. The game of basketball or sports in general is just such an amazing thing. But what puts it over the top is when it becomes TV as well. When you see teammates in the, in the huddle getting mad at each other. That's the drama we're talking about. You see all the rumors between this team and that team and trade and stuff like that. Those are the things we talk about on this channel if you ain't really noticed. Yeah, it's cool to talk about this team playing well. But a lot of the times it's like, ooh, trade rumors. Ben Simmons, James Harden un un unhappy. Kyrie Irving vaccination status. All of this stuff makes the game of basketball or the NBA or, or professional sports in general a level above everything. The drama fuels us as fans. Yes, I also watch a ton of actual basketball, but the drama helps. The, imagine, imagine if the sport had no drama whatsoever and it was just people dribbling and shooting. I mean, yeah, yeah, it would still be fun, but I think... And, oh, snap, this is crazy that we actually talking about this because the more I think about it, the more I am on your side. One of the reasons I don't I don't watch college basketball is because there is might, this might be there's no drama. There's not a ton of drama. You know what I did? When Jawan uh, Howard threw that slap, I was invested. <laughs> oh, God, I was invested, dog. I was invested. College basketball don't have nearly as much drama as NBA basketball, so that's probably why I'm not interested. Wow. Snap. I'm just one of those reality TV people that just so happen to enjoy basketball a little bit. I'm a Russell Westbrook fan. There's nothing wrong with being a Russell Westbrook fan. He's done he's done nothing but give us great moments and memories for the last decade plus. And you know what? He's still giving us moments and memories just on the opposite side of the spectrum right now. There's nothing wrong with being a fan. The problem is when people become stance. And that's not just talking Russell Westbrook. I'm talking... Any form of celebrity, sports related, music, just celebrity in general. It's always been so very weird to me when people stand someone. I understand. I'm a fan of a lot of people, a lot of people. But I will never be able to look past the flaws. And I'm only talking about their occupation. I don't know these people as people. I will never be able to look past the flaws of a certain player to just put them above everything else. I will never understand having an entire account dedicated to a certain person. Don't you get tired? My favorite of all time, Chris Paul. I can admit he be acting his ass off. You know, and you talk to stands of a certain player, they can't admit the faults. And that's where I draw the line. Be a fan of everybody and anybody. But don't become a stand, y'all. I was born and raised in Bay Area, California. I lied 
I lied to people and said I started watching basketball in the 2007 playoffs when the Warriors upset the Mavs in the first round, but I really started watching the year prior when Dwayne Wade beat the, the Mavs in the finals. Wade and his early Heat teams were my favorite growing up, but I revised my own history once the Warriors started winning in 2013. Ooh. Ooh. You tell me. Is bro a bandwagon fan or what? Is he a bandwagon fan or what? You let me know. Hey, listen, I, I got nothing against a bandwagon fan whatsoever. Enjoy basketball. I mean, if if you want to jump teams, who am I to tell you not to? If that gets you a way to stay engaged in the game of basketball, who am I to tell you who am I to tell you not to? Like early stages of this season, people were asking me, Kenny, can we jump on the Bulls bandwagon? I said, Yeah, I don't care. It don't I don't matter. It don't matter if we have four fans or four million fans. It don't really it don't matter to me. But rewriting your own history is kind of wild though. You could just say that you're a Warriors fan. You know you I think if you said I started watching basketball when Wade beat the Mavs, but I'm a Warriors fan. Nobody's going to look at you differently. Oh, I started watching 2007. Yeah, Steven Jackson, Baron Davis. Ooh, we was killing it. it I mean, you might sound, sound slightly cooler, but if you said, no, man, I, I messed with Wade and Shaq back in the day, but I'm from the Bay, so I rep the Warriors. People be like, oh, I understand that. NBA Twitter's funny, and my sense of humor is immature seeing that I find all the LaMickey copy pastas and different variations of it funny. I also find it funny when people say stuff like ratio and you fell off. All right, I draw the line there. Um, copy pastas, every once in a while a good copy pasta give me the smirk a little bit. But the fell off and you the ratio thing, I don't even understand how that's still alive right now. And it, go, it goes under my tweet like crazy, and it is what it is. And people are like, Kenny, why, why, don't you, um, why don't you block those people? Are we tired of seeing that? And the reality is, y'all, if you want if you want to know my real answer why I don't block the you fell off ratio people, it's because I sell engagements. So them replying, you fell off, engagement. Them viewing the tweet, engagement. I don't want to take that away. You know what I'm saying? I'm a businessman. Or am I a business, man? I, I don't, it's one of the two. So I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm going to just mute it every time I see it. It could be, let me see how many, uh, literally, I'm going to see how many accounts I have muted. And, and I don't have a lot of people blocked. If I got you blocked, you had to say some wild stuff. I have 317 people muted on Twitter. 317 people muted on Twitter. So, you know what I'm saying? That's engagement, bro. Imagine if I took away 300 views of a tweet or 300 replies. I got to do what I got to do. All right, here's my last confession and we'll get out of here. Um, I don't consume as much basketball as I did two to three years ago. Two to three years ago, we were still up and coming um, in this whole basketball realm, uh, internet basketball realm. And I was like, and, and my mindset was I need to watch every second of basketball imaginable because I need to be I need to be right about the things I say because I want to be respected. Because in this world, you need respect to do anything, especially in the in the game of basketball, because of me as somebody that is five, seven and not a basketball player, it's going to take a lot to get the respect of the players. And at the end of the day, I kind of need the respect of the players in the career path that I want to be on. So I need to watch as much as I can. And, and for two to three seasons straight. Every single day, if it was ball on, I'm watching it exclusively, watching it. And it was the best decision of my life because we get to this point where this channel has half a million and the main channel has a million and I'm on TNT. I'm traveling the world to talk to NBA players and stuff. It's great. But now, bro got other responsibilities. So I can't watch every single second of every single game. So I, I, I supplement it. So like, I might not be able to watch Timberwolves versus Warriors yesterday, but what did I do when I woke up? I watched I watched the condensed version, which is still like 40 minutes long, and I listened to some podcasts revolving around these teams to see the because the people that have um, market exclusive content, they got no choice but to watch every single second. And I don't need to take their word at face value, but I need to hear it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not watching the same amount of basketball as I was three years ago. It's still a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm still watching a lot. But it's not nearly the same, and that's my confession. Is that a confession? I don't really know. Let me know in the comment section your NBA confessions, good or bad. I'm here for it.